Okay. Here is the second part of chapter 6 then. We are starting with 6.7 conservation of energy. So conservation of energy starts from the conservation of energy law that we know from metric which say, states that energy cannot be created or destroyed but can only transform from one form into another. So in this case then the energy that we are talking about is given by a formula which we call steady state equation or which we call Benoist theorem. So then here for a particle of fluid then the, the steady state or the conservation of energy then states that the total energy of a particle of fluid remains the same provided that no energy enters or leaves the system at any point. So then the total of energy of a particle consists of its potential energy, its pressure energy and also its kinetic energy. Therefore the energy of the particle can only cannot be lost or cannot be created but it can only be transformed from either potential to pressure or to kinetic or vice versa uh, in whichever form we can only transform from one form into into the other form so that's the information about Benoli. So when this equation is called Benoli's theorem, it's also named after the father and son of Benoli's who both claim to have uh, derived the theorem. Okay. So the conservation of energy then says that starts with the potential energy. The potential energy of a particle would be then the energy that the particle would have because it is at a certain position with respect to the reference point right so potential energy we calculate using mgh uh, and then since mg is weight we can replace mg by w since uh, m is density times volume we can replace uh, mgh by density times volume times g multiplied by h so what we then we tend to do here we sometimes because then we might not know the mass of a particular a, a, a particular fluid we therefore sometimes want to know what is the partic what is the potential energy per unit mass so in that case, then we will divide the equation by the mass, and then we'll get any potential energy per unit mass. It will be PE over M equals to MGH over M, which will give us GH. Similarly, I can calculate then potential energy per unit weight. Then I'll divide by MG, which is weight throughout. Then I'll only be left with H. And then sim similarly, I can divide by volume or everywhere, and then uh, then I'll calculate what is called then potential energy per unit volume. So in all this, then it's just a variation of uh, calculating potential energy for every unit that is given. Pressure energy. So pressure energy will be the energy that the particle will have because it is under pressure. So whenever a fluid is inside the pipe, it will be under a pressure that is not atmospheric. Then we will calculate the pressure energy of the particle. So then the pressure energy is given by pressure multiplied by the volume of fluid. So then since the volume is mass over density, then I can replace that. Since mass is mg, I can replace that then we can have a variety of equation of how to calculate pressure energy. Similarly, this pressure energy of a particle, if I want, I can calculate it per unit mass, I can calculate it per unit weight, and I can calculate it per unit volume. Right? The last form of energy then, which is 
kinetic energy. This is the energy that a particle of fluid will have because it is in motion, it has velocity. So we calculate cal kinetic energy using half mv squared. And since then, mass is density times V. We can replace that. Since mass is weight over G, you can replace that. Then we can have a number of equations that are for calculating kinetic energy. Similarly, we can calculate kinetic energy per unit mass. We can calculate kinetic energy per unit weight. We can calculate kinetic energy per unit volume. When I combine these equations, then we have the total energy of a particle. So then the total energy of a particle, we said it's made up of potential energy, pressure energy, and kinetic energy. If we calculate this uh, total energy per unit weight, we call it the heat. Then uh, the total heat or the total energy of the particle, H, is equals to Z, representing the potential energy. Z would be the height difference between my reference, my, my particular fluid and my reference point, plus pressure energy over rho G, plus U squared over 2G. So then the pressure energy will be represented by pressure over rho G and the kinetic energy by U squared over 2G. Then in all these, these are called uh, energy per unit weights are called heat. So pressure over density times G is called the pressure heat. U squared over 2G is called the kinetic energy heat. And then Z is the potential energy heat. Okay, I can do then the same for total energy per unit volume. I won't go through them because we don't normally calculate, but you must be able to derive those equations just in case. But they are also there in the formula sheet. Okay, so what happens when there is losses? Remember we said uh, kinetic energy or pot energy of a particle will remain or energy of a particular of fluid will be remain unchanged until no energy enters or leaves the system. So when there is a loss, there is energy that leaves the system. In that case, then, we say energy before is equals to energy after plus some loss of energy, right? So friction, therefore, represents a loss. When does friction take place? Every time fluid is flowing inside the pipe, the particles of water will rub against the surface of the pipe, thereby there will be friction that is created. So the extent or the amount or the quantity of friction that will be there is dependent on the how f the velocity of the water inside the pipe. It will also depend on the, the 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 surface, the smoothness of the surface of the pipe. So, but in this chapter in in, in N five, we don't uh, determine uh, the frictional energy loss. We will be given. We will calculate that in N six. So now, when there is friction there, for the frictional energy heat would be amount of energy uh, or energy per unit weight that is lost. So then we will then say our equation will say total energy of a particle, capital H, is equals to Z, which is potential energy plus pressure over rho G, which is the pressure energy heat, plus U squared over 2G, which is the kinetic energy heat plus whatever I have lost. Then I can calculate power before. I can calculate power that is lost. I can calculate power that is after or energy after. And then energy after over energy before is called a mechanical efficiency. And then I can also calculate that by calculating the difference between the total energy heat minus HF over, over H. So that will give me the equation of how to calculate a mechanical energy. Okay. Then that is the end of uh, this chapter. Uh, hopefully then uh, you will now go through the exercises. And then uh, when I find time, 
and then I will also uh, do some exercises and present them over the, the, the videos. Uh, I thank you.